Definitely not in Hawaii anymore. Chili's just hanging around town. Line them on fire. <laughs> Hope my belly's ready for this. Me and you, buddy. Here we go. Back with another season of Cooking in America, and this time I'm in Santa Fe, and I got a buddy of mine that grew up here that's gonna show me the ropes. What up? What's up, Cliff? How are you, man? Welcome. Welcome to my hometown. So I got a pork tamale for you and, and a beef fajita, and we're gonna set you up in Santa Fe, man. If you look around, you got natives selling jewelry, the flags of the Spanish conquistadors, and what this culture is is also represented in the food of this area. I mean, this is one of the only places where your main ingredient is also the main decoration. You got <laughs> yeah. chilies everywhere. And to give you a little bit of context, that building right there is called the Palace of the Governors. And this is the plaza. This was all established as a capital city like 400 years ago. Isn't this country like not even 300 years old? Yeah, this country is like 240 some years old. This reaches far beyond the history of the United States. There's a duality in Santa Fe. We are in the desert. We're also at 7,000 feet. You go out to Canyon Road, you got 200 art galleries. There's more artists per capita than any other city. It's a community that is based on food and creative culture. I'm taking you to Palacio Cafe, where my man Damien has been slugging it out at the best chili spot in town. And after 20 years there, he's opened up his own spot. I wanna start you on the breakfast burrito, which was invented here in Santa Fe. This is my secret spot. Hey, Damien, how are you, man? Good, nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Good Thank to see you, you for coming. This is my friend Sheldon. Chef. Hey, Chef. Nice yeah, to meet yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for Hello. coming. Hello, Maria. You used to work down the street at the Shed. Yes. And the Shed was like famous for their chili and stuff like that, but now it's like you're on your own spot. This chili is better now. <laughs> ah, I put it out there. <laughs> What signifies Santa Fe New Mexican cuisine? There's like two truths in New Mexican cooking. One, you can put chili on everything, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and two, everything goes into tortilla. The biggest misconception, especially in northern New Mexico, is that it's Mexican. It's its own thing. It has Mexican roots, but it also is heavily influenced by the Native American culture, a little bit of Tex-Mex thrown in, the original Spanish con conquistadors that came through here. So we have chicken enchiladas, I got huevos rancheros, which is just like corn tortillas, a little bit of chili and eggs. The breakfast burrito, potatoes, bacon, eggs, cheese, and just smothered. This red chili, he stews for like six hours. My show, I like to like <laughs> Overcomplicate things a little bit, but like a little bit, a little, yeah, well, a lot. <laughs> I overcomplicate things a lot. What people do with breakfast burritos is they'll add a ton of stuff, and then it becomes a sandwich. It becomes a wrap. Right. No, a breakfast burrito is just like get that filling in there as simple as possible, and then Choose yourself, smother it. Smother it. Straight to the point. Forget that avocado. No, you don't need. You don't all need the, the avocado. Noodles. You don't need the, all the other stuff. Like this is all you need. The chili here is like a religion. The state question in New Mexico is red or green, and that refers to do you want green chili or red chili. But if you want both, you just say Christmas. Christmas. So the red and the green, you taste the difference, right? It's the same chili. It's classified under Hatch, which is actually a town. It's just at different stages. So like the green is when it's younger. So you basically take the green and you put it in the big canisters and you roast it over open fire. In the fall, you drive around and you roll your windows down. Oh, shoot. And there's a smell that permeates throughout the city. You know it's, you know it's the season. Then you peel off the outside and then you stew it very simply, maybe salt, a little onion powder, sometimes cumin. And the red, you take the red and you dry it out. And you'll see like these things called ristras hanging and they're beautiful decorations, but it's also food. Either rehydrate it or grind it into a powder. That's the basis for the red chili here. And so anything under it, keep it as simple as possible and let that chili shine. So you grew up here. Yeah, this is this is my home. Like I was born in the, in the South Pacific, but I've been here since I was a kid. My mother came from the South Pacific to go to college. She could barely speak English. She used to have to tape record her classes. And she'd go home and she'd translate them. Growing up here, it's like, I'd go out to eat and this is all the food I'd have. Then I'd go home and I'd have like Japanese food. In Santa Fe, that totally works. Our tagline for Santa Fe is the city different. People have come here for a sense of healing. In the 50s, it was about tuberculosis, the elevation and the dry air and stuff. 
people find spiritual cleansing here, emotional cleansing here. It also has one of like the highest PhD rates, but at the same time, it's like, oh, my shoulder hurts, I better go see my acupuncturist. One of the highest gay and lesbian populations per capita in the US. Yes, yeah. the, the box is, is larger than the city itself. Yeah, and economically, there's a duality too. Like Santa Fe is, is a very wealthy town, and it's also a very impoverished town. Not a lot of Native Americans live in Santa Fe too. They're usually out on the reservations. Because I, I was very blessed. My mom was the principal of the Santa Fe Indian School. So I actually spent a lot of time on reservations growing up. The food there, when you get it, like you get, you sit down in these people's homes on feast days and there's these pots of these chilies that have been roasting for a long time and breads out of wood ovens. And it's a culture that is on display, but as business owners in Santa Fe is heavily underrepresented. There's not a lot of new, like, native restaurants. Can't even think of any right. that really and, exist. And you would think that this is where you would come to yeah, and, experience that. And people come to, like, feel close to that. You know, the pottery, the turquoise jewelry that they make, and the silversmithing that they do is, is second to none. Well, how close do you get to really experiencing that culture without it kind of being through a commodity? I, I can't speak for the Native American community because I don't know the answer to this, but would I like to see more of it? Yeah, I would just like to see integration more than commodification. New Mexican food, why isn't it part of the new American way? Because what makes it great also limits it. What makes New Mexican food so special is that chili. And if it's not from here, it's not gonna taste the same. I want everyone to know what this is about, but I want people to have it in the context of this city. When you eat this and you walk outside, all this makes sense. And green chili is like a gateway. When you have chefs coming in and trying to introduce foods from other cultures, they'll throw like a little green chili on thing, like, come on, come here. And then we're gonna slowly slide in other things. Speaking of that, there's one thing. This is New Mexican Robitussin. Like, if you're, this is just green chili stew. If you're sick, let me make you some green chili stew. Oh, your auntie died? Let me make you some green chili stew. The congratulatory and also like ailment cure for everything. What car payment? Yeah, well. I'm good. Yeah, you're behind on your rent. Off the shows. <laughs> <laughs> this chili is our welcome mat. The red carpet of chili. Right? Yeah, the red chili carpet <laughs> thrown down. Pork adobo, oxtail soup, lao lao, and locomocos. I'm excited to taste a little bit of Hawaii.